Well, you know, when I look at our longer term vision, it really centers on expanding where we were, and it's really a platform for us. And when you think about building a platform, there's a lot of benefits that go along with that, but the biggest part of that is that ecosystem. And we call it our financial services ecosystem or our trading ecosystem. And really what that includes is everything from our customers to the sell side, to the buy side, to thinking about third party vendors and how we work with that. There's a lot of benefit around that. And we think the competitive advantage around that is really the openness of the platform and working with all these different areas. Instead of just building everything natively, a lot of our longer term vision is around how we open some of those pieces up and interact with those, those other um, venues or, or sell side firms. And when you look at the three pillars that we have going forward, the first piece is that partnership, and that's a core part of what we're doing. The second piece continues to be building things natively. Um, but then that third piece, as we evolve, is around automation and how we really open up automation and think about how that can help and assist a trader. Yeah, well, first of all, we're really seeing demand across asset class. And when you think about gauging trade automation, there's two things we like to start with. The first is that we're not replacing a trader. We're really enhancing what they're doing throughout the day so they can concentrate on the less liquid, more esoteric securities. Those lower value, lower risk securities, that's where we're really concentrating. And when you think about automation, there's a number of different structures that, that really underlie that. We look at it as a framework. So not just execution, but looking across a trading life cycle. Everything from classifying an order to thinking about how you place an order, when it really should be automatically traded or you know, when we should actually have a high touch person come into to the fold. And then the last piece of it is how we face the marketplace. Placing orders, an execution suite and interacting there. And when we see demand, to me, I decompose it in two ways. One, there's internal demand that's driving automation, and that's looking at the firms, right? And so it could be they're consolidating their desk. It could be that there's cost pressure. It could be that they're starting to look at multi-asset trading. And then ultimately, it could also be that they're thinking about how to make the trading process better and look at data differently. That's the internal piece. When I look at the external piece, there's macroeconomic factors that I think push, right? And so the fact that there's more data out there, I always like to use a term that, that data is the sort of seeds for automation. And it starts the, the foundation and the roots of what we're doing for automation. The fact that there's streaming prices, the fact that there's more execution quality data, all of that I think opens up demand, but it, it actually creates the system so that we can build a better automation framework overall. Yeah, so a few things just to sort of plant the foundation around this. When we look at the evolution of what's happened in the industry and when we get to automation, there's a number of steps before we get there. The first is that there's manual trading, then it goes into hybrid trading, and then ultimately fully electronic trading. And then the data comes into play. And that data really, as I said, plants the seeds for some of the automation. The amount of data really changes the framework of how a trader looks at automation. And so we're seeing a number of different things. Initially for, for visualizations, it's everything from price history charts to heat maps to visualizations of that data independently. But then really where we're headed is combining all those sources. Having one chart that says, here's my price history, here's all the executions that I'm doing, here's how I overlay evaluated pricing or execution quality data within that, here's how streaming access come into play, and show all of that in one visual. That's number one. Number two, when you really think about automation outside of that, it changes the role of a trader a little bit. And so instead of just sending that order to a marketplace, you're thinking about how do I set up routing rules? How do I classify orders? How do I look at exception processing and how do I think about a feedback loop of data coming back into the system? Um, and really changes the context of what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So those two things together creates really a larger need for visualizations with our system and that's really what we're looking at today.